Right. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. So welcome everybody to debate deathmatch episode 12. We've got with us today. I'm going to be debating Game Boy and the topic at hand is transhumanism and um, whether it should be embraced in its entirety because it is a net positive for humanity. So we're going to just open the floor. Um, I'm going to give my opening statements and then depending on the time that I take, then Game Boy will be given the equivalent. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody so I'm not interrupted by these fucking peasants in here. See you on the other side, boys. All right, I don't really think I need to explain. All of you have judged before. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nadar. Get your cock, put your cock back in. Thank you. Right, okay, brilliant. Um, judges, yeah, you, you already know what you need to do. I'm not going to give explanations again. Brilliant, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, fucking peasants and bitches and whores and whatever. Um, the point is, I'm not here to try and convince you that within our lifetime, we are going to see the evolution of AI. And as a result, um, we're going to achieve transhumanism to the potential of achieving immortality. What I am here to convince you, obviously, that's debatable in, in itself. And I do believe that that is the case. So I'm willing to get into that later on. But for the sake of the debate, what I am going to be doing is if it is achievable, if we have the technology and we can achieve it, then all is well, all is good. We should embrace it. Uh, reason being, because when it comes to human beings and what is more important for us than anything else, I would argue, is um, not dying. And dying itself is, should be seen as a disease because that's what it is. Um, sorry, sorry, back up. I mean, dying from old age. I mean, age itself should be seen as a disease, or at least I see it as one. It functions as one. It breathes as one, meaning that when we, from the day we are born, we are uh, diagnosed with a disease, and that disease is inevitably going to kill us all. It's age. Now, um, we've evolved, and over the last hundred years, we've been capable of achieving uh, 3x our life expectancy. Well, not not exactly, but pretty much 2x um, plus something else um, due to medi medicine and antibiotics and whatnot. And as a result, I see the next logical step in human evolution being transhumanism, where we will merge with like machinery and become capable of achieving life expectancies of 500, 1,000 years, and so on and so forth. Um, why is that a good thing? Well, because when you dive into the psychology of human beings, we understand or we observe that there is one thing that human beings fear the most, and it all comes back to the unknown, believe it or not. In other words, something that you don't know is there or is not present, and this can be found in things like deep water fear in other words you're scared of just being out in the middle of the deep water or even um, not knowing what is under or being stranded in open space whatever um, these are or just like falling in a dream some pe some people would say and there's nothingness it's just darkness we are very very scared of this that is where all our fears lie that is what motivates us to push forward into life and achieve things that would make that or erase that from the equation um, also on the opposite side when we look at things like progress those are things that are also the opposite motivating force we've got the pushing force that is death we've got the pulling force that is progress that is the possibility for us to thrive as a species and if that is the case the only logical step considering um, all the threats and risks that we face going forward in life um, would be things like, I don't know, fucking asteroids or the sun collapsing or CO2 fucking uh, killing us all or whatever, whatever the fucking case is. Um, all of these things are inevitabilities going forward. And if we do not um, harness things like nuclear energy and then being able to use that to combine it with AI and machinery and technology and make progress to achieve, to achieve transhumanism, then we are basically fucked as a species. And I believe there are some calculations that would prove that to be the case. But if not, 
better safer than sorry. So yes, um, we should achieve, we should um, embrace transhumanism as it will lead to the betterment of humanity. And again, our mortal bodies are but a phase in our chain. We started off as fucking tadpoles somewhere. Some people will tell you we were even fucking fish some thousands, hundreds, millions of years ago, potentially. Um, that's actually a thing, by the way. It could be. I don't know. Speculation. But regardless, um, yeah. So we evolved. We haven't always had this body. So any attachment to it is silly in my regard. And we should be open to the evolution of that. So I've taken about four minutes so we're going to go ahead and give it over to game boy that's my opening statement go ahead game boy take it away thank you uh i think my main argument revolves around uh the uh the replacement of tech undermining a lot of things while also opening the door up for a lot of challenges in the future uh you mentioned like evolution how like we were once tadpoles but when you're talking about transhumanism i don't think that's wise because that was all naturally occurring that was like that was darwinism but that happened through nature that didn't happen through like humans actively trying to change their genetics so i think when arguing about this we need to look at it as the evolution of tech and how that will soon impact humans and I think in a way we are already seeing the negative effects of technology through past examples we've seen in the past. I think right now we have witnessed an increase in tech similar to what we faced in the industrial age, just to a minor degree, where it's led to addictions to these new technologies that, like, while they have brought good things, they have also brought bad things. So if we take this to a bigger level, like transhumanism, where that's directly impacting your body, like a neural link, it will go past just like, oh, some kids are addicted to their iPads. It will be far more dangerous. It's not going to be like we're just extending the lifespan because like you won't have a case where they like solve dying from old age. That just won't happen. Old age happens from failure of body parts. And if you replace those body parts with technology, those that technology, unless it's constantly replaced and you constantly have to adopt the new tech, will fail as well. I think this is one of the main issues with transhumanism is you need to constantly adapt. You need to constantly change in ways that we usually don't have in the quote-unquote natural world uh people just to stay on the same social level will have to constantly adapt to what everyone else is doing like they have done in the past with new technologies like the car for example that's a concern that we are facing in the modern day where people can no longer walk they have to embrace the car and that's hurting a lot of the poorer people who cannot afford a car because they are forced to take a big hit financially when in other cases, they could have just put that into their house or put that towards like college funds or whatever the hell. So I, I'm not saying that we should totally abandon transhumanism to actually address the prompt. I think that it should not be embraced with open arms as a net good because there will always be bad things that will come with adopting this new technology and we need to be skeptical Towards it before we embrace it. This doesn't have to be governmental. This could just be socially, just addressing what this technology will bring and hoping to properly handle it like we've done in the past. I think that's probably the end of my opening statement. I kind of drew it out. Okay, brilliant. So that's our opening statements. We're just going to go ahead and open the floor and I'm going to be starting. So again, chat or anybody who's intervening, guys, you can use your channel points to directly inf uh, influence, obviously, the outcome of the debate. You can ask direct questions or engage us with trivia or whatever the fucking case is. But otherwise, I'm just going to get going. Brilliant. Okay, so 
Tech equals good, yes, but also bad. Now, yes, you are right. I'm going to concede on that. Obviously, when it comes to anything, I would even argue, there is always going to be good and bad outcomes. In fact, some people would say through the worst atrocities that human beings have ever committed, we can observe some of the best outcomes or vice versa, some of the best, like a miracle occurred, um, somebody winning the lottery example, um, there is horrible outcomes where they sp they have this, there's like an actual syndrome that occurs or there's like a known thing. I don't know, I'm not a fucking medical professional, but the idea is that when you get such an influx of a huge amount of money that you just run wild, you spend it all irresponsibly and um, yeah, you you pretty much fuck up the entirety of your life because then you've already spent it on stupid things. It's gone forever. That was your one, ch one chance and basically... You're, you're in depression for the rest of your life because, well, you fucked up your one chance. Um, the idea of a car, it's good for whoever can obtain one, but what about those that can't? Once again, obviously, there are going to be negatives and positives, and I do acknowledge that to be the case when it comes to even things like transhumanism or the um, em embracing AI in its entirety. There are huge risks, in fact, and... It's with a very heavy heart that I am going to make the point this work <laughs> that I'm going to make the point that what we're talking about is um, we are basically tiptoeing on the edge of a cliff. Um, I would give that uh, an hypothetical, I guess, or that example of uh, real life. In other words, the way I look at it is if we don't, embrace AI, if we don't embrace transhumanism, if we're not open to these things, then this will curtail into his next point or to my opponent's next point, which is um, we should be questioning it, limiting it, putting safeguards in place that if we do that, we are running the risk of spending too much time um, with bureaucracy, red tape and all of this stuff where we're essentially going to be trying to limit something that we have very little understanding of. And um, it could potentially um, create scenarios where we've now run out of time. We've encountered these huge astronomical, you know, I would even argue universal problems, asteroids, shit like that. You might laugh and think, oh, yeah, really stupid because it's like, yeah, an asteroid. Like, I think they calculate that it's something like 100 or 200 years that we're going to be in close proximity with one, like, directly passing from the Earth. So that's just one example. So my argument hinges on it's not whether we want this or not. This is our chance. If we don't do this, in other words, we are fucked, okay? Um, you could give the argument of things like gene therapy, but I don't know how realistic that is. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to argue for transhumanism. And one last thing, which was, uh, fuck. Okay, so the idea of, like, it's a natural progress. And now, obviously, I'm going to say that's an appeal to nature. Just saying that something is natural is bullshit because it doesn't really mean anything. Is but this for word salad aside or the main dish? I'm not Casey. paying more than $5 for this. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I'm, I'm not going to uh, I'm not gonna be pedantic about it. It is an appeal to nature, but I'm just going to be good faith and, like, engage with him. What I assume he means is that this is not a natural progression of, hu of human beings or our capabilities or what our bodies are capable. I That's see, different. yeah, I, I, I see machinery or human, being a, hu human beings being able to harness machinery and like use it to create technologies and whatever as a next step in that chain link. In other words, just because we weren't capable of using it previously, I don't see how that is preventing it considering it will give us the same benefits um, if we do use it. So go ahead, Game Boy. Uh, I would like first want to address the appeal to nature thing, because I do think that's a fair criticism that I was asking myself was, I don't think it's a appeal to nature to say that the way things are now, which was developed almost all naturally, like biologically, uh, separate like small things and i'll be willing to 
address transhumanism actually fixing a lot of the issues that we have now, like amputations. But I do think that right now, when you're making the argument as an extension of evolution, the reason I bring up nature was that's how evolution is like perceived. It is a natural development of a species. This is not technology is artificial. It's an artificial evolution. And I don't think that it should be treated like it's something that is exactly the same. Like it will it functions the same way as like natural development. It just fundamentally does not. It is artificial. We get to choose what we want to change and what not. Now, I think when you are arguing about like, well, not acting or not embracing transhumanism will lead to more deaths or like it will hurt us to continue to have people dying of old age or continue to have people die of diseases when transhumanism can fix it. I don't think we should like just have transhumanism as the fix it all of things. And it's something like a Pandora's box where it might fix one small thing, but imagine all of the pain and suffering it could cause by unleashing this technology that we are not, we don't have enough knowledge on. This is the reason that right now we have the FDA per se to not just release these vaccines. It's because we don't want to release some vaccines that hurt people, just like we don't want diseases that hurt people. But both are bad, but I'd rather not have people have a direct impact on others and directly hurt them, you know, cause deaths that were unnecessary just to solve an issue that has been going on since the beginning of human existence. Like body part failures, like heart failures, strokes, and stuff like that have always happened. The need to fix it all of a sudden is not something that we can, like, we have to do now. We can take some time make sure that we know what this technology is that we are unleashing on the world. I don't think that's a hard ask to say. Like, transhumanism might bring a lot of good, like you said, but a lot of bad. And I think that you saying that it's going to be a net good just dismisses that perspective, you know? Okay, so we Ask ha Satan lies I'm now going live. to kill you, Casey. I will murder you in your sleep, you Twitch. peasant. An Fuck interactive you. AI okay. with a sense of humor you won't believe. Blah, blah. Streaming Thank now. You. Live Thank on you. Twitch. Latin cross, Latin cross, mm -hmm. Latin cross. Ask Follow Satan lie, Latin AI, cross, probably. Latin cross, Latin cross. Wow, brilliant. Thank you, Casey. Um, we're going to... Then we have a... $5 to yeah. advertise. Imagine that. Imagine that. Yeah. Didn't even pay. This piece of shit. Okay. Right, so um, we've got a question from the chat, which is, here we go, here's the question. Would me and Baron be a cute couple? I don't really think I need to say more about this, Game Boy. Is that Bisky? That uh, is yeah. Bisky. You are correct. Pretty good couple. Pretty yeah, good couple. I... I think you would be the worst couple. Worst. You, he will never be your boyfriend. Okay, never, never say never. There is always the chance, but no, Bisky. You are worth more. You are worth more. You can do better, okay? Fuck Baron. Fuck his psycho unhinged fucking dad. He can go fuck himself up the asshole. You can do better, Bisky. I believe in you. Right, okay. Um, right, so where to start? I think the... Fuck, I've totally missed. What was the last point you made? Do you remember? Uh, I made a string of points but i believe yeah just the last point what i said was you saying that it can bring bring bad with the good is shit sorry i got it i got it i got it i got it okay so that it's a net positive and that's my position and i need to defend it now when we say something is a net positive it means that it results in a positive so wh whether we are my position is not that we're not going to have any bad outcomes my position is just it's going to result in a positive outcome that's my position and that's understandable right yes yeah okay and i, I have to defend that and say okay well how do you know that well I, yeah i think uh my statement's more like you acknowledging the bad cannot 
it can be contrary to the net positive statement. So you kind of have to prove that it's a positive and not a negative. Because yes. you can't acknowledge that there will be bad. Yes, it can be. In other words, whether it is or not um, is up to me to defend. I, I understand that. And obviously, um, I'm going to have to uh, use previous data that we have. In other words, where we have applied technologies and whatever. In other words, I'm going to have to concede that while I do have evidence to point to or facts that have occurred through human history, irrelevant to that, um, there is no clear-cut evidence that harnessing or using transhumanism is going to bring about like guaranteed positive outcomes. My argument is more on the lines of, well, we've done this in the past multiple times that have given us a calculated estimation for us moving on into the future. It's a weak point. I will defend that. Obviously, this is more of a... Uh, this is where it comes into the belief. This is about the first argument that I gave at the beginning of the fucking debate, which is like, I'm not here to argue whether this is going to be achieved in the next couple of years, because all of these things are up in the air. But I do believe in humanity. And this is obviously a belief. But it is based on things like um, our evolution as human beings, and observing technologies that we've harnessed, or creating products or whatever that have ba basically increased our life expectancy. And, well, antibiotics would be a perfect example of this, where it's not something that purely exists in nature. It took human intervention. It took human uh, experimentation to be able to create those antibodies and, like, administer them to human beings and, like, give us the capability of uh, getting over, like, huge, huge fucking viruses and pandemics. And this is just one of those things where it's, like, nature, the earth, the universe is literally on a single course or has a single goal in mind, and that is the eradication of the human species. Whether we like it or not, it's just survival of the fittest. You kill in order to not be killed. And as a result, if I value human life, and yes, that is my position, fuck every other fucking species out there. As long as we can survive, then that I'm good with that, okay? I'm sorry, guys. We're going to fuck the bunnies, fuck the kitty cats, we're human beings, all right? I do see us as superior for the time being, whether we encounter a different life force moving in the future. I see that human beings, um, us protecting ourselves. And obviously, if we don't need to kill the bunnies, let's probably not do it. But in the event that they get in our way of achieving, um, you know, increasing our life expectancy and like um, advancing our society or our civilization, then off with their fucking heads fuck those bunnies okay so um that's what i'm gonna say and again um i do see the appeal to nature again we're just saying that because it's not a part of natural evolution that somehow that means that it's a bad thing um i am going to no, point, that's point not more on my statement it's more that you were comparing it to just another form of evolution like an extension of a previous evolution while i'm trying to point out that it, we that was all natural. That was something that we could not control. Transhumanism is, therefore, you have to, like, we can stop transhumanism or we can adapt to transhumanism. Yes. We could not uh, actually fight our evolution. We, as tadpoles, we weren't like, no, I don't want to do it. Okay, you know? what about antibiotics then? I was actually going to clarify something. Two things. Yeah. I think it's more than fine if, if you want to go into like when it will happen because that could also affect in what shape it will come in you know like and also what is transhumanism because i could view uh like that is just a form of transhumanism that we are adapting our body to fight these diseases and, yes which is a so i was just wondering because you're kind of talking about it like we're going to go to a point where we just reach transhumanism, like there's an end goal. No. When I view it as like a process that will be on the increase. No, I see it as a process that we, we've already been delving in this for a yeah, long I time agree. now. We, we are intervening as human beings and we are saying, you know that thing called the natural process, the life cycle? Yeah, fuck that shit. Um, we're not okay with that. We're scared of death. 
one motivator, pushing us away from death. And we love the idea of being able to progress and we love our families. We love spending time with them. We want to see more of this. And as a result, we have a natural inkling to fight this off. Whatever this is, whether it's a fucking asteroid or it's a disease in our bodies, we are going, whether we like it or not, to attack it directly and try to influence our power or, or our comp complexity as a species in order to adapt to our environments we are not just going to crawl over and die and as a result transhumanism is one of those things that if we were to embrace it is going to increase our potential to be able to give us the capabilities to fight it off because well obviously if our bodies have a limited time well i'm sorry my guy but there are materials out there that just don't have those things there are capabilities where we can harness things to create a new fucking heart through stem cells and shit like that and like create new organs because our current organs are just a waste of space they're, they're just they're useless they die at some point they are inefficient and they don't do a good enough job. So, I mean, unless the argument is that we should somehow stop valuing human life because that's that's just going to be another progress. We've already been able to, well, yeah. Ours die, yeah. those won't. Like, it's... Yeah, I think the issue with that argument is you are talking about replacing organs fundamental to our living in order to achieve something but if you replace a heart what if there's some faults what if like this is a what if what if what if yeah what if autism sort of thing but it seems like when you're replacing organisms you have to be very diligent about how you test it mm -hmm. how long you're going to wait before you actually start applying this technology and i'm thinking that when you're saying that we should like embrace it I don't think this is something that should be taken lightly. And when you're talking about replacing organs, even if it's going to extend, it can possibly extend your life period for 50 years or 100 years or however this company is probably going to advertise it. I don't think if it can harm a human life that it should be embraced before we actually know stuff about it. This might be a net good. They might be right about the... 50 100 years saying we're extending your life period but i don't think it's something that should be embraced as a net good until you're confident that it's a net good okay it, so, oh, we've so, right, done this we we've kind of done this with every other technology i i would even say that we've done this to our detriment where we embraced smoking for example and then later on figured out that this is hurting us this is doing a bad thing even though at certain points it was even advertised as something beneficial to our health. Okay, um, so the argument, again, is going to hinge on it could result in bad outcomes, and obviously this is questioning the logistics of it. In other words, what is the process that you are going to adapt? And obviously me who has the position we should embrace it, you are, are you of the opinion that my, I'm of the opinion that we should just like, like, as soon as we have the slightest bit of evidence, just, yeah, go in there, rip everybody open and implant a new mechanical heart. Is is that what you think my position is? I do not think that's what your position is. But okay. I, but I just think that I, I'm of the opinion that you have to be extra conservative <clears throat> about major changes that you do to your body because it can be very harmful to, like, us as people you don't want to have a nation embrace technology that could kill them before they were uh even before they were even in their 70s just because they were told that they would live to 130 you know that's what i'm trying to say is okay we, we need to first probably vet these technologies before we embrace it as a form of evolution this is our next step you know what you're trying to say mm -hmm. um obviously i'm just going to address the, the right panda you are a judge bro so i'm i'm just going to ignore the highlighted message anyway because well judges can't ask questions but okay um all right so game boy um no i'm not of the opinion that we should just like go ham on this i haven't really established a position my argument is simply that we should embrace it um but 
irregardless of that, I get where you're going. And again, I am going to be good faith and like acknowledge that it wouldn't be strange for me to see your position being that, all oh, right, yeah, so my argument is that we should like totally be like open to everything. Look, my position is that as long as we have the technology there, as long as we have ways to understand that this is not going to cause like critical failure within human beings with, within our species, or it's not going to create a detrimental problem. Or, and when I say detrimental, I'm not talking about like the eradication of human beings. I'm talking like this would kill somebody in a study. And even though we know that to be the case, anyway, we're going to go forward with it. We're not there yet. Um, and we're not at that point where we need to do that. And so I think that's a stupid thing to do in general. So that wouldn't be my position. It's more on the lines of instead of when we're talking about human beings, because that is a very, very lengthy and it requires approval by things like the FDA and whatever. And there is a huge fucking problem when it comes to bureaucracy and red tape. Um, um, when it comes to anything of the medical sciences. The argument is more on the lines of things like AI. Now, here's where we come full circle back into AI because, um, well, I just, okay, I just want to make it clear. My position would never be, all right, we have no reason to believe that this is going to work. And we also understand that it would result in the death of a patient. But yeah, let's fuck it. Let's go, go ahead and see what we're, what we're going to find. We've tried that shit in the past. We've done experiments on human beings. Yes, some people would argue that they've led to us being able to where we are today. Things like um, women being put on a fucking board in the middle of a conference room and surrounded by 50 fucking medical professionals and opened up at the fucking stomach um, multiple times, timed as if they are a fucking pig, just so they can record how long it is before the woman dies and thus we have the C-section. That is how the C-section came about to exist. It came about through trial and error, um, through medical professionals. It was a very, very horrible procedure that most of the time resulted, well, all of the time at the beginning resulted in the deaths. And as a result, they had to operate on the woman live in front of a fucking full conference room in order to prove um, in order to be able to time it because there's a such a small window to get that procedure done um, that everybody was dying in the process. And as a result, the point being that those are things that human beings had to do in the past, or at least because of red tape and bureaucracy nowadays, even if we wanted to, um, anyway, we can't perform those kinds of like operations on people. And as a result, the things that you are scared of when you're saying, or you think might assume that my position would need that. No, that's not where we are. My argument is more in lines of AI when it comes to the bureaucracy and the red tape. Yeah. I think that when you're talking about bureaucracy and all of that stuff and you go into government, I feel like when you introduce next uh, new technologies, even like per se an absolutist uh, monarchy is not the same as the modern U.S. democracy. One government had the full capability of its government, but yet one small figures in our modern government have more power. It seems like whenever you introduce new technologies, they will only expand bureaucracy. They will only expand government power. They only expand war power and power over other countries. And I don't think that you're, an argument with AI helps you when you're talking about <clears throat> government power. Oh, um, no, sorry. I, I'm just going gonna, gonna to cut you off because I think I'm using the wrong word. When I say bureaucracy, I just mean whenever a new technology or something is being developed, something is happening, research is being done, um, there are processes that are required. I, I probably should just be using red tape. I don't even know why I said bureaucracy, but the idea is like the FDA example, that would be seen as a bureaucracy. I could be mistaken. Um, I should pro probably using the wrong word. I don't want to confuse the shit out of you, which is why I interrupted you. What I am... I, basically saying is like when a company wants to administer a new drug this is an example they have to pass processes specific processes in order to make that happen and if they avoided those processes then they could make it quicker but they would include elements of risks 
And there's also, it's also debatable that some of those processes are not even required anymore and they're a thing of the past, but I don't really think I know enough about that to argue it. Do, do you understand when, what, I, what I meant when I was saying that? It yeah. m- might be the wrong word. The term bureaucracy in the correct manner, it just has this connotation that I'm not used to when you use it in that fashion. But it, the FDA is. Yeah. I'm, oh, it is. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Um, yeah, so that would be my only uh, only argument. Now, when I say I'm I'm basically talking about like AI, and as a result, we th- see things like open AI. We see things like um, like uh, like Elon Musk like hammering down on open AI. We see like all these multiple companies open up like their AI AI. They're just using buzzwords in order to sell their shares, but. At the end of the day, we also understand that there are a lot of intelligent people who are arguing that we should slow the fuck down. Now, it just so happens to be people like Elon Musk who basically got fucked out of a beautiful, magnificent deal that could potentially make people the richest people in the future. Um, And considering he got fucked out of it, it, I can see an ulterior motive where he's just like, not that he thinks that AI is a problem, he just like wants to fuck them over and he wants to be the one to advance and that's why he like supported like grok which is like an open source project released on like github and whatever the fucking case is so i'm i'm very skeptical of them and then again you've got more intelligent people who are arguing in in favor of ai and they're saying things like well um we understand it but when it comes to any sort of new technology human beings are not just going to run wild this isn't the correct assumption to make it is that we shouldn't purposefully prevent it from developing in fear of what could arise in the future in other words we should do that when there is a threat at risk um we should do that when we know or we have a re- any reason uh, to and we can do a risk management calculation to assert whether this could result in huge like problems with human beings or whatever. Yes, we should intervene there. We should put on the brakes, but not if there's no reason to. And it's just speculation when it comes to oh yeah, what ifs going into the future, like you yourself brought up earlier. Uh, I think. AI is to a point where the concept itself is so like broad and diverse where you have to ask certain questions like what kind of AI do you are you talking about what in what manner do you want AI to function in the future if you want to avoid these issues and yada yada like what about super AI what about uh this kind of AI where you have to be more like in depth about what the future is going to bring to notify the actual uh, consequences of adapting AI into certain like jobs and places similar. Mm-hmm. AI, uh, like machine learning, I think is a form of AI that, if done properly, is something that we should embrace in a lot of fields, even if uh, just hoping that they don't replace like human jobs or something similar to that. Uh, I think AI can be a useful tool for collecting data and giving people the right uh, information to do a job properly. I think like in the medical field, teaching is another good one where if you have a teacher who wants to put a put a study together, you, you can use uh, like ChatGPT and they could like research stuff to a good degree of like okay i want to confirm this is true and i'm not teaching my students some horse crap that i found on the side of the road right next to the elementary school like it i think but when you go into ai that starts interacting past just a collection of like knowledge it it becomes very difficult because if you start having ai do the jobs if you have the ai like work in factories like it can be very dangerous and i think that it's important to make a distinction between different types of ai and their systems that they use the processes okay um 
I think this is like some next level type fear mongering, because as I said at the beginning, I'm not here to argue about when like AI is coming into the future. And what I mean by that in argument to what Game Boy just said is that, like I said at the beginning, like I'm, I don't see this, like we have any reason to be speculative about it for now and the things that we are capable of doing for now going into the future yeah i can argue that threats are going to arise and they surely will but i mean like my opponent is indicating we're already engaging he's not the only one who would have that opinion i've seen multiple people also have this similar opinion of like what and it all arises from like what ifs it, it, it is a level of fear mongering when we don't understand something and its capabilities but we just are scared of it because of again you see this the unknown not knowing what could arise because of it it's just one of those things um when it comes to human beings we fear it more than everything else and that's why we fear death because what happens after it is unknown um yeah so this is just this is just fear mongering literally in other words chat gpt i'm sorry but what has chat gpt given us to make us question you know, all the capabilities and the things it's going to be Terminator and take over. Nothing. It hasn't done anything. It literally is like pretty shit at like half of the things. But I will be, again, good faith and understand that while we are seeing those technologies, on the back end, what the companies, the corporations, the government and all of these units and institutions have is a lot more advanced than what we're seeing on the front end. That's things that has already been vetted and have been put out to the public knowingly that they're going to cause if they cause any harm it's going to be minimal in other words if it's a fucking typing chat responder or whatever the fucking case is it's just going to hurt people's feelings um it's not going to kill anybody it doesn't have that capability and even if we do instill them in factories it's like, well, yeah, but the assumption, the correct assumption would be, well, if we've got fucking AI robots basically doing what human beings are doing nowadays, there will just be AI robots. They're more efficient. They're faster. They don't require fucking days off. They don't get sick. They don't have to attend their fucking mother-in-law's sisters, cousins, brothers, dogs fucking birthday. And as a result, they're not taking days off. They don't slack. They don't even have fucking rights at that point. So it's just like, yeah, you can use them for whatever the fuck you want. And as a result, you wouldn't even have employees around in order to somehow the Terminator is going to be engaged and they're going to kill the human being. Like, no, like, let's get serious here. The whole reason why AI ever becomes a huge threat to human civilization is when we've given it the keys to civilization and said, hey, we're at A, we want to get to B. You're the thing that's going to calculate how that can happen. And the ultimate goal is getting to B. Whether you need to erase us, in other words, in order to get to B, you do whatever the fuck you need to do to get us to B. Now, unless we do that, then there is no threat of mass extinction. When we're talking about fucking robots, you understand that we as we develop an AI that could potentially rise up against human beings, we're also developing another AI for the specific purpose of preventing AI number one from doing that. Like, there's, that's literally the best way to counter these things. So we already know how to solve that issue. Yeah. I think <clears throat> uh, what, what you said, there is a value, there's a valuable, like, kind of, Part of that, like, oh, well, this is just fear, yada, yada, yada. Oh, my gosh, this is just fear. This is fear. They, it, they're they just scared of progress, yada, yada. But I think what it fundamentally misunderstands is what AI actually is. We are looking at, with chat GPT, machine learning. That is just what it is. There's no other way to go around it. It's AI machine learning. You can look at all the open AI statements. They will never mention otherwise. You can look at all the government documents, and if they know what they're talking about, they won't say otherwise, or they might say it's AI. Uh, it's a form of narrow AI that has not re reached a point where I think it has any major fear that we should be worried about, and I brought it up as important things that we could bring up. That's what I mentioned previously. I mentioned that it can be used in an educational sense. It can be used for 
teachers. What I'm more concerned about is a form of super AI or a form of AI that it surpassed the knowledge and rationality of humans because it has no way to properly match the human emotions that we form unless it has proper reasons too. And if it does not have proper reasons with no proper programming to do so, then it could easily lead to an outmatching of what we have the capability of beating. This is not like some Terminator thing. This is a real idea that people have been working on for at least 40 years. And I think if transhumanism comes about, so will super AI. The, they cannot match human reasoning without having, like, we are not algorithmic. I butchered that word. We are not an algorithm. We do not think with an algorithm. That's, AI cannot match that. AI cannot work with the like feelings and emotions that we do we think killing's wrong because we are person we are a person this is one main reason all cultures have thought that the killing of someone in their group was morally wrong there's hardly been circumstances where we have found someone a group of people who want to kill people in their tribe or collective but AI does not feel that. They are not human. They will not likely feel it unless they're properly programmed too. And if we mess up that programming, there you get the fear mongering, yada, yada. Okay. Um, a couple of like blatantly wrong assumptions there. We're not an algorithm. Excuse you. <laughs> Wait, we are literally the embodiment of a very, of one of the most sophisticated algorithms known to man. What the hell is this shit? This is, this is bullshit. We, our brain is literally a fucking like control center to function all the other organs in a specific way so we can like carry on like living and making and surviving. Like, I don't understand what part of this is telling you that this is all random or by chance or luck. We are literally an algorithm. So is nature, so is the universe. Everything functions and the correct assumption would be there's a reason why they function the way they do and it's not just out of chance or luck. So wrong assumption there. Um, the second wrong assumption is that somehow AI, um, doesn't have feelings or emotion. Uh, well, what, right now it might not, I don't know what the fucking institutions have, but going forward, the assumption being that they wouldn't have feelings and emotions, that is the most naive thought that anybody could potentially have. Because if you understand the whole reason of why we look at human beings and we separate them, like the vegans would argue, something like the whole reason why we separate human beings from animals is the disparity or the difference when it comes to self-awareness and how self-aware a species is. And as far as we're concerned, as long as, uh, as, long as we're using science to determine these things, as far as science is concerned, um, the whole reason of why we're even capable of doing that is the increased level of intelligence. And if your then argument is that this thing is going to become more intelligent than us, but also not hold the opinion that somehow it's also going to also have um, like more emotions than us or feelings than us, even though that's literally the reason why we have those things according to science. So you're, you're contradicting yourself and you don't even realize it. Yes, the correct assumption would be that they are going to have feelings and emotions considering they're going to become more intelligent than us. Now, whether or not they like us, I don't know, guys. We, we're kind of like dislikable at this point. So, I mean, as long as we, we're like more likable going into the future, I don't really see a reason why we can't uh, like get along. At least that's what a lot of fucking intelligent... Uh, I know you're laughing and it's like, oh yeah, we're going to get along with AI, are we, you stupid idiot? Yeah, no, no. Yes, literally a lot of fucking intelligent people who are developing AI or like scientists or whatever come to that conclusion, considering, again, when you use science to determine whether something has or hasn't feelings and emotions. And again, just want to point this out. Anybody who's a creative and previously argued that AI is not going to be creative, I'm sorry, my guy. The only reason why, hear me out, hear me out, everybody. The only reason why creativity exists in general is because we have yet to discover everything that exists. Creativity is simply thinking or 
coming up with something that we have yet to discover. That's it. That's all it is. And the moment we've discovered everything, well, now there's no more creativity. And as long as anything that exists can think of something that we have yet to discover, then creativity continues to exist. So yes, AI is more than capable of being creative. AI, the correct assumption would be that it will have feelings and emotions, considering that, again, the only reason why science sees human beings have feelings and emotions, seeing as it doesn't talk about the soul, or that's metaphysics or whatever the fucking case is, it's all a function of the brain. That those are things that signals that the body creates in order to create make us aware of our surroundings and whatnot so yeah go ahead uh you brought up that humans are not uh are algorithms i do not think that's a fair representation of what an algorithm is an algorithm is a step-by-step -step process with a set of rules or or a set of rules but it usually comes in a batch to do a task that is an algorithm humans do not work like that on a brain level we do not work with like okay i'm gonna take off the trash i'm gonna walk downstairs i'm going to open the door that's not how we do it we just say i'm gonna walk and take out the trash and that everything else revolves around algorithms for ai it is all made up of algorithms and separate rule-based decisions and step-by-step -step decisions Humans do not have a set of rules in their head. They might have morals, but they do not have a set of rules in their head. And they don't have a set of rules to make up rules like some AIs do. Uh, you, Not to mention, I think you brought up how AI can probably form emotion. You're confusing behavioral s simulation with emotions on a human level. We can stimulate emotions, but they're still going to be part of the AI, and it's going to be completely artificial, that those emotions aren't going to prevent decisions if they ever got in the way of a task. That's If you have an algorithm that says you're going to have to do this thing, they're not going to say, but it doesn't make me feel happy. No, they're going to do that task. That's why we can put AI into factories, and it's not going to be like, oh, I don't I don't want to do this. This is not fun for me. No, it's going to do it because you already gave it its task. Now, no one even brought up creativity, so I don't know why you brought that up, but creativity is not something that is just done because we don't have all the knowledge. Creativity happens, it can happen based off knowledge. Van Gogh wasn't the first guy to come up with painting, but he still had a whole bunch of creativity and made some of the best paintings. That was just him being creative. Someone can copy Van Gogh and still be creative in doing so. Creativity is a it's almost on a childlike level of what all humans do. From like your very birth, you can form imagination. You can have dreams, even if those dreams have already existed in the past. Creativity is just your mind coming up with concepts. They don't have to mean new concepts, so I don't see why you bringing up that it once AI has all its knowledge or whatever the that AI can have creativity. AI can come up with concepts, but it's not creativity. Okay, so you mixed a bunch of words in there, talking about imagination, about children. Nobody even mentioned imagination. Imagination you can be... creativity, and that's a form of a creativity is imagination. Imagination is something that can help you in the process of being creative. Yes, correct, but it's not a requirement. So these two things are not interconnected and they don't respond with one another. So yes, creativity. So answer me this. We've discovered everything that is. How are you creative? You, creativity requires you to think. And you gave an example of Van Gogh, the guy who literally was revolutionary. Whenever we talk about Van Gogh, we say he's revolution. Why would we say he's because revolutionary, even though he just did the same thing that everybody else just did? What, what, what is the because difference? Because he took a collection of ideas and combined them. That's oh, what sorry. So does. did that happen prior to him? Yes, there was multiple. His style of painting wasn't original by yep. any metric. It was a combination of different styles. And did that combination previously own. exist? Every person. Did that combination previous? No, you need to answer this. Did that combination previously? No, no brilliant. Okay, there we go. The no, Creativity no. Creativity is not a new 
form of ideas it is it is literally you're just uh, you're just fucking contradicting yourself the guy thought of and you say it your way a new way of doing things in other words he took a collection that already existed acknowledged and he did it in a different way that is creative in other words as long as nobody else did that with that specific thing that he's doing you can do it on a general level you can also do it on a specific level he took a collection of ways of strokes and doing things in a specific way and he did it in a different way that's what he did he he was creative there's the difference there but yeah um yeah the the creativity ceases to exist once everything has been discovered because You've already done everything that has a, was ever going to occur. You've already discovered everything that is. And as a result, the correct assumption would be that creativity does die at some point. And I don't really think any like intelligent person is going to argue that. Um, yeah, so it does die at some point. So the correct acknowledgement would be, well, considering that we came from somewhere, we know nothing. Um, that would be the starting point. And the end point would be once we've discovered everything not saying that we are i'm just saying that that would be the correct assumption and anything in the middle means that creativity can exist as long as you're thinking of things that can that you haven't thought of already or doing things in a different way that you haven't been doing them previously that requires creativity and there's no reason to assume that ai won't be able to do that creativity. it's already doing that to a certain extent yeah creativity is just the idea to form ideas using imagination you again you're required why, why do you keep bringing imagination why do you keep bringing this is imagination the definition it is the definition creativity requires imagination okay you, you okay when you say imagination it's just you can think of something or visualize something without it being there and as a result it's going to give you a clearer way of getting around things it's the mechanism that allows you to be creative it's the mechanism that you use in order to be creative so what is your argument now that ai won't be able to imagine it's already doing I that to said a... you were the one who brought up creativity i never brought it up i, I did because I said... it's a common argument for why but ai will never achieve argument. sentience yeah but you argue but... that it will achieve sen uh, sentience through agi but then you argue that it's not creative which is up AGI. yeah but that's what I you're describing arrow. when you say it's become smarter than human beings this is what you're saying that you might no, not be i was referring to super ai singularity no super ai is just the point in which AI has can outmatch humans when it comes That's to That's literally so, AGI. Okay, but all right. Uh, yeah, no, go it's ahead. Not. Uh, AGI is right. the so and narrow AI is what we have now, which is uh, it can perfect one like process. This is one thing that it can do, and but AGI can perfect multiple processes. Narrow like point of view broad point of view general point of view basically yeah these, these are the definitions i don't okay I'm so okay so again irrelevant to definitions or, or however you want to do it will ai in your contra in your statements uh, or at least you've told us up until now you worry because when it does achieve that thing where it becomes more capable than human beings that becomes a threat correct can you please rephrase Okay, so like AI becomes really powerful, therefore problem to humanity. Yes? Uh not necessarily. I think when it's just the way in which that So why happens. should we put a bunch of red tape and bureaucracy if there's the guarantee of it never becoming I've more powerful than human beings? I've never said that I wanted to regulate AI. That's something you, you did though. Right you said that we should be really careful about these things. We need to be easy to take a step. What do you mean socially? Are human beings just random civilians going about buying their fucking groceries, developing AI projects, or is the or are there companies that are the forehead of it, or the institutions, or the government, or whatever? Who's the one who's I uh, what? I, what do you mean socially? What do you mean socially? Well, we we aren't forced to uh, like accept AI. There's a lot of like communities and right now who are like, well. Cat GPT will be the end of the world, or it's over. And I feel like just having a mindset out there that brings up like concerns with like AI, with is contrary to 
embracing it. Wait, do you think the like, companies and the government and whatever are preventing themselves from developing or researching because people on the on Reddit say they don't I, like it or they're worried about it? No. Okay, so what, what has this got to do with anything regarding the development or the research going into AI? I, I'm trying to understand. People can just not, like, embrace, like, transhumanism. It doesn't have to be something that, like, just because, like, companies make AI projects doesn't mean that people whoa, whoa, have whoa, to whoa. Wait, wait. It. So you're saying you, you don't argue for companies, institutions, governments embracing it. The only argument you have is human beings embracing it. In other words, they're creating it. They're putting it out to the world. But human beings shouldn't embrace it. That's your position. What, Just what's social. the difference between human beings and corporations and human beings who are customers? Uh, because and... you're drawing a line and you're saying should be embraced by these, shouldn't be embraced by these. I I have not drawn that line, or at least that's not the point I was making. Should uh, company should companies and institutions embrace it then? Well, I. I'm trying to understand. Do you like? Do you think that I've said that we need only companies or only like? Well, you did use have... socially, and then I asked you what socially. What do you mean when you say socially? And then socially you said people. As in, like you just said people talking and creating well, yeah. communities and being worried about. That was an example of a social idea. We should have. We shouldn't just outright like what people view something socially impacts what they're going to buy people and what people do there's there's a big social movement against the vaccine therefore a whole bunch of people did not get the vaccine you and understand? they're fucking idiots but go ahead yeah you can view my position as idiotic it does not make the difference of the wait i'm just i'm so, I'm so confused movement. right now again when you say that what do you think my position because when i say it should be embraced i'm saying that all humanity functions together. You're saying that, like, shouldn't be embraced by human being the, the buyer? In other words, the you you understand supply and demand. Like you are like talk I'm about. I'm not saying that we should just stop making these technologies. I'm just saying that the like the way that we. Why do you think? Wait, wait, wait. Why do you think we're making these technologies? To progress humanity. I mean, there's a demand for it. The, the, wait, there's every, a demand for progress. There's always been a demand for progress. Yes, and like, that's the next pro step in the chain. So wait, so you need I to agree. understand. Wait, wait. So you need but to understand. There's a demand right now, for yeah, AI. No. There's a demand for transhumanism. As a result, the companies, the corporations, are providing the supply to the demand. Like this is just basic economics. And as a result, the correct assumption would be that once the technology arises, they're obviously going to buy it because they were the ones who wanted it to begin with. A quick interjection. Uh, uh, some people are wondering if this debate was going to be going longer than an hour because we're already over an hour. Yes. Uh, the, like it's usually we, uh, maximum is two hours. Okay. Why? Who's worrying? Does somebody need to go out? The judges. Um, I wasn't made aware of any of that. I don't know. But if you guys need to go, like if one of you three needs to go. Did say that he was going to go soon? Like he thought it was going to last an hour if I was. I, the, the correct assumption is that the debate death matches go on for two hours maximum. That's always what we've made said. I aware of that. I, I just, I cleared three hours. No, just up, in case. Yeah, we, we'll keep, you guys keep going. You guys keep going. Okay. All right. We'll keep going. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah, the correct I'm, assumption would be that what you, when you say it shouldn't be embraced socially, that makes no sense because, well, they're the ones who are demanding it. So why would they prevent themselves from getting the things that they asked for, even though they asked for it. Yeah, that's you're actually bringing up my point. You say that they are demanding this thing, and I'm saying they shouldn't. That's exactly my point. It's I'm saying that it should not be embraced in the way that it is currently. It should not, or at least the way that you've presented it as something that we need. It. No, you have. should be saying something different. They shouldn't be like wanting it. They shouldn't be demanding it. Not not they shouldn't embrace it. Embracing it comes whenever it's ready. Uh, 
That's the end product. That's the final product. So you're saying that they should, we should rewire our brains to stop doing the thing that it's been doing for thousands of years, which is developing and achieving new, making progress for humanity. And that's just another step in, it, in that direction. But somehow we should now stop doing that? You, you realize that just because something is like progress doesn't mean that we have, like, at one point, we had viewed eugenics as the next progress to humanity. This will have our children be better than all of... And I'm like, sorry, wait a minute. Now we're comparing eugenics to transhumanism? Can you let me all right, yeah, yeah. my point, yeah, please? Because it, it does kind of sound bad. It, just because something is progress does not mean that it should be embraced or demanded for. I think, well, you're correct about the distinction with embracing of something and demanding it. I think that the demand we have right now is reflective of what we will get later on. Like you say, this is basic economics. If you demand for a Sprite soda that's cherry, you're going to get a Sprite soda that's cherry, even if I, but my point is like, well, we should have a Sprite soda with vanilla or whatever the hell. You, we can make minor differences with technology by uh demanding for different things therefore what we embrace is different and i think even with something like ai there should be more extensive like testing and there should be more extensive precautions and we make sure that we are aware of the damages it might hold for us later on if we do if we're not properly educated why should we feel that we should demand for such an item why should we say well i want neuralink without like that's providing demand for the progress of Neuralink, but if we aren't properly educated on what Neuralink is, then why, why are we demanding it in the first place? That's kind of my argument when it comes to supply and demand, but when I was, what I was mainly making an argument for was against the concept of transhumanism as a whole, just because it, it's a lot easier to move on if we properly address the issues with the central subject. You can make your arguments for and against it, and then we can talk about what we do later on how we address it um okay so the drawing a correlation between eugenics and ai or transhumanism is a complete bastardization of the of the concept that we're talking about because you are talking about progress and i understand that and you gave an example progress. you told me to stop talking so yeah the same thing right so we can't talk about eugenics in the same light of ai because that thing happened, what was it, 50, 60 years ago? And now we're talking about anything, anything. Bro, you mentioned vaccines earlier. The fucking beef that people grew up uh, in the fucking world rose up against vaccines and whatever is because, first of all, they were made aware that that type of research was going on. Second of all, they were a part of the entire implementation process because they knew it exactly what to expect going forward i'm sorry Did, was, was this the case 60 years ago or was it that nobody was fucking aware nobody was challenging thing the government had very lim li limited amount of um getting in the way of those types of things none of that is even the world we live in today you have to go through millions of fucking processes in, in, in order to make anything new nowadays, which is uncompar not comparable to the past. So comparing it to eugenics, you might want to give a better example, but just to skip past that point and just like bring up something else. There is, there is like anything that could be of great harm to humanity. You better believe that we are going through millions of fucking processes in, in order to even like remotely question this thing and comparing it to the past and saying that yeah but we didn't do that then is silly because it's like i said it's a bastardization of the concept it's not fair to do that this makes no sense and it doesn't mean anything and it, it's insane that somehow now again you're requiring or you are for the position i, I thought my position was like insane or my position is like an idealist or i'm very optimistic about the future or whatever but your position is that even though and again this idea of pro all progress is 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 uh, good I, that's not my position 
We need to make fraud progress in order to analyze it, to then come to the conclusion of whether this thing was a good or bad thing. Yes, we can come up with our calculations and our theories and our hypotheses prior, but we need the testing in order to then analyze it, to understand were we correct. Like, there's no... And, like, in the past, like, the, if we're talking about, like, peer reviewing process and, like, sending things through the fucking mailbox and shit and arriving on the other side of the earth, like, three months later, and we're comparing that to nowadays where we, where scientists and doctors are communicating over the fucking web and things are, like, instant uh, to a certain degree unless you're talking about like data transfer but even that is like pretty fucking superior like none of this makes any sense bro like yes no there, there is no reason for now to be intentionally preventing the development of ai or transhumanism because up until now it hasn't given us any reason to question it now going forward what if what if it's all what ifs that, but we need to have a way of explaining it. When it came to eugenics, there wasn't a way of explaining how this thing is not going to cause great harm to society. In fact, I even believe that to a certain extent, it was purposefully put out with the specific purpose of causing harm to at least certain types of individuals. And as a result, like comparing that to this makes fuck all sense. Go ahead. Yeah. I... Uh I'm kind of, I don't actually know how that addresses what I kind of said. No, but... it does, because you bring up these things and I engage with it. No, because I think you misunderstand why the example was brought up and you kind of carried that over as if it was a direct comparison with AI. <laughs> Whether it was a direct how... or not, you're the one who brought it up, so I engage with it. Stop trying to make it seem brought... like I'm in a different world. Go ahead. No, you're... Please stop interrupting me. It, uh, I, you are comparing it as if it was like I'm saying that we, like, like it's a comparison with AI, but it was more of a comparison between how someone's reaction can be towards progress and how can that progress be undermined by people's reactions. You are completely right with how the public reacted they viewed it as a harm to these individuals stopping like autistic people from reproducing the just mentally slow people and people with undesirable characteristics but a lot of other people viewed it as a way to get rid of like autism and a way to get rid of these mentally like handicapped like like issues like autism i think dyslexia was in not dyslexia, uh, ADHD was another one. And it just, when you are talking about processes and ways to get rid of issues, that's something that, while it's not a direct comparison, it is a way that people have viewed something and have actively fought against. This is why we don't have eugenics as a process that's taken seriously at all. It is a different time. This is a different time because people's minds have changed on issues. And I'm hoping that even if you don't think that like people fighting progress like transhumanism is good, I still think that that is a way people have addressed issues in the past. I'm not saying that eugenics and AI are directly comparable, and if that's a dumb argument, I will admit that. It's, it's just I'm trying to compare people's reactions, which I hope you can understand. Okay. Um the only reason why we care about people's reactions and then we're going to observe them and say, oh, this is a logical reaction because we understand that human beings by default, we're irrational when it comes to our emotions and they are shaped by our inner biases so that we hold certain beliefs about the world. And as a result, when we hear a piece of information that aligns with our biases or what the things that we already believe, then we are going to have a natural inkling to sway in that direction or be for that thing. But when it's the opposite, we just go against it. Doesn't mean that that thing is bad or good. That thing needs to be observed in its entirety for what it is 
to in order to be determined whether it is bad or good and whether human beings reaction towards it is a good or bad thing i would not recommend that we start developing or researching things based on human beings reactions to things considering that to be the case and the reason why i did bring up why i did argue the way i did was because i was trying to prove that when it comes to um when it comes to fucking eugenics there was no reason to suggest that this thing is good or is going to result in good outcomes um, in the past. And as a result, when people looked at it, if they were favorable towards it, it was one, because their intentions were in the wrong place to begin with. In other words, they wanted to eradicate, like you said, autistic people or whatever the fucking case is, or not prevent that from occurring in the future, or two, because they were not educated about the matter because there wasn't any education on it. It was simply, oh, here's an idea. Let's go and research it. But by researching, we mean on human beings live while they're alive and fuck with their fucking bodies. Yeah, sorry, mate. But that's not analogous to the present where in order to even get to that point where you're doing human trials, you first need to go through so many fucking processes in order to even get there to begin with. And as a result, comparing that with today is insane, which is my point. In other words, it doesn't matter about the reaction. The reaction of people, first of all, doesn't matter because it's usually irrational. And second of all, um, when it comes to whether that thing is going to cause harm to human beings, it's first going to have to go, jump through a bunch of loops in order to first even be like implemented on a human level. So th those two things are not like, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'd rather not really stay on eugenics because I do don't think it's really relevant to uh the conversation but i think there's two things i want to address you said that production shouldn't matter about people's feelings i think that goes contrary to what you said previously about supply and demand if people don't aren't for transhumanism i don't think that it will like in the like it will be something that we should that will be demanded and therefore supplied. If people's mind get gets changed on things and they're content with having this AI and they know the difference between this AI, that AI, uh, this form of technology and that form of technology, I think that will change what the market does and what how people try to supply this need. It will no longer be about like personal opinion or just constant progress to a thing um like just having a frame of view of what they want will probably like change what we embrace and transhumanism probably will have a different outcome if people are just properly educated uh at least in my point of view you might you can probably agree with this perspective but you'd probably say that transhumanism is a good so therefore if they're educated they'll be for it now i'd like to also say that um eugenics was a deeply debated topic in its time and people were somewhat educated to the like way they could there are several like newspapers which were how most people were educated on the subject was oh let's read the news and let's see the debates that are happening people genuinely thought that eugenics was a way to get rid of these mental handicaps or physical handicaps by just preventing certain people from giving birth that so i don't see it as like something that was like oh it has an obvious example uh obvious answer it it's pretty clear to see that this is coming from a point of view of like modern day and like clearly seeing this as a wrong it's like doing the same for slavery and say like well they're obvious if example while just ignoring the fact of public opinion at the time okay so <laughs> comparing newspapers and articles again because again if we, the assumption is education and now we've got f fucking to 
order of magnitudes, like, I don't know, I'm trying to use big words to explain. The point being made is a lot more fucking educated when you're looking at people reading newspapers and the, the daily fucking debate. I highly doubt that that was even going on, considering most people were just scrounging for, like, pretty much anything they could fucking eat at that point. Um, or, like, they were, like, focused on working. I'm they're pretty... I doubt that they're fucking reading newspapers about the debate. I'm pretty sure that it's just a room of individuals and they're the ones who are associated with it. Very little is said about it until it's actually official, considering newspapers well, are not going to report on something that is not actually out in the public eye yet. These things are, happen on the back end before the research is done. Or even if it was the case and it was involving them, we're talking about like, like, even if you just take it by population, what were we at? Like, 4 billion people at that point. So you've got half the population got uh, uh, relying on, like, sub-level type uh, communications. Uh, uh, like, it's just, it's insane. And um, the idea that... Uh, the idea that they were for this, yes, obviously. The whole point is that they weren't educated enough to understand that this is not some type of abomination or Satan spawn, the thing that is coming out of a woman with autism or whatever. And actually, it's a very logical like answer for why that is. It was just that we didn't have the education enough to understand it. And as a result, when we saw it, we were criticizing it as if it was that. Um, turns out wasn't that we were wrong and had we educated ourselves prior to just saying oh yeah you know that thing bad let's just get rid of it we didn't even know if it was bad or good to begin with and last of all wrong again the reason why demand comes about it's not because of people's fifis like you tried to point out that i'm contradicting myself it's because of people's actions now if you know anything about data analytics and how companies and corporations and institutions and government are making their decisions it's never based on people's feelings and emotions those are the things that go to the bookies in fucking bet shops so they can rack up fucking profits when it comes to the way companies and all these sophisticated places make decisions and they make it based on people's actions in other words you buy a duck you buy a piece of wood you buy a thing that is specifically designed to create a bathtub or the material therefore they suggest that you also buy the fucking chassis in order to fill it with the material in order to create a bathtub because it's obvious that you want to buy a bathtub that's the way they do it it's not based on your feelings and your emotions so you're wrong just because we're suggesting or we're pivot or moving towards transhumanism there's a demand for it it's not because of people's unreliable not understanding of society and they're just asking for something that is actually not good for them it happens to do with the actions that they're taking in other words every action that human beings are taking is moving us towards progress now whether that progress be good or bad is debatable but when it comes to transhumanism for now again we have no reason to really doubt it should we be careful and like be whatever yeah but don't purposefully push it the fuck down and say, nope, you're dangerous because if you ever got to the point where you achieve singularity, or that is a common word that is used, at least that I'm aware of, where it no longer is in control by human beings, um, then somehow it's going to kill us or whatever the case is. We have no reason to even like believe yet that we're even going to achieve that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think when you say that Fifi's can't, it's actions, well, Fifi's can impact action. So it's not like your feelings towards a certain thing is going to be totally different from an actual, like, what you actually buy or sell. It If you have certain feelings, I mean, I think you brought up veganism and vegan is in here. Hi, vegan. Uh, he has certain feelings and a certain morality, uh, like moral system that says, I'm not going to buy meat. I'm not <clears> going <throat> to eat meat. Now, if we have, like, if we develop that in people, like, past just, like, I don't, I don't like technology. Ooh, technology is scary. If we actually tell them the facts of a situation, 
and they developed their own system, then it would, like, their own system of logic and how they view transhumanism. I think that will deeply impact the market, no matter if it is for or against. It's not something that is, like, just fifis. It's more in-depth than that. Uh, but it is al almost directly impacted by what you buy and sell is how you feel. That's how you represent yourself and how your opinions are represented when you buy and sell stuff. That if you like chocolate, you're going to buy chocolate. That's that's your that's your feelings. That's your taste. Okay, so um, again, right. If we were to just consider you want to talk to vegan, brilliant. Vegan, I know, I'm, I'm not assuming that there's anything like bad going on. No, seriously though. If we were going to ask vegan, why are you a vegan? Um, depending on the answer that he gives us, we can understand that whether where like he's making that decision to be that or do the things that would mean that would, would which would align with what a vegan is as a result um if he then said to us because light equals bright that's why i'm a vegan you'd understand that this person probably needs to be hospitalized but the idea that human beings we are evolving. We are becoming more educated. We understand more about ourselves, about the sciences and everything else included. And as a result, when we are making decisions, while you are right some of the time, okay, when it comes to that, usually the case is, mm, I'm sorry to say it to people and like let you on on this, but happens to have a correlation between when people are really poor hence have less money to spend as a result of buying less things as a result when things get created we're usually not taking them into consideration entirely it happens to be the rich people who have more money who can spend more to educate themselves more and as a result they're the ones buying more which are creating more of the demand which is usually the case scenario but again this is just basic economics so when we're looking at the data and going, this is what humanity is asking for, it's very little the case that it has to do with a lot of poor people. Usually products get rolled out in their first form as the most expensive, exclusive, and um, let's just say luxury version of themselves, considering that that is the market that has the most to offer. That is the market that has the most money. That is the market that's been waiting for this or asking for this for the most amount of time. And as a result, we're going to supply them. That's the way it works. We usually leave the products last to uh, the people. Wrap it, wrap it up, motherfucker. Okay, we'll wrap it up. All right. Um, yeah, so that that's usually the case so again it's not coming down to feelings and emotions all the time i would even argue that it's quite less of the time but i'll acknowledge that at least to a certain extent it does it is factored in um but then again like there's a way to understand that that previously we were, we were far less incapable of understanding whether the thing that we are asking for is a good or bad thing and that has to do with research development things that we are far more again capable of doing and understanding going forward into the future example even if i ask you why transhumanism what transhumanism is you are regardless of your opinion on the matter you are far more capable of understanding what it is than somebody living 50 60 years ago that was being asked hey do you know what this or that is that they've never experienced or whatever they just like like can read about yes obviously there's a huge disparity considering we have a plethora of knowledge and that is uh, available to us faster more efficiently than previously and as a result the decisions we're making the things that we are asking for are going to align more with what it is that we want versus what we don't want. Are risks there? Yes. Should Are threats going to arise? Yes. But we'll deal with them as we go along. And for now, there's no reason why we should be holding this technology down as every calculation that we can make is pretty simple. If we don't do this, we're just going to continue falling off the fucking life cycle and dying because of old age and sicknesses and whatever. And if we do transition, considering we have every reason to assume or believe that if we replace our body parts with like mechanical organs or something subsequently, maybe stem cells or whatever, that is going to extend our lifeline. Again, there's, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I don't know disagree with you that people with more money like 
are represented more, but they're probably going to be the ones who buy the stuff. It's not like robot arms are going to be exactly cheap. It's not just because these people aren't represented for their want in transhumanism, it doesn't affect them. It's not something that they're going to be exactly changed by in the future. Like, you acknowledge you're poor people. It's not like they're going to be the ones who are going to take out a mortgage just to buy a robot arm. That's I'm hoping they're responsible. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't disagree with you. That would be one point that I would concede on. And I'm fully aware that the first people who are going transhumanism is going to be made available to them. When we say transhumanism, we're obviously like talking next step, next evolution of it, um, next iteration of it. As a result, yeah, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be rolled out to all the rich people and it's kind of be like, going to be like, fuck you, poor people, until it's like down to a cheap enough version where people can afford it. But by then they might even be too poor enough to even purchase it. The idea of why somebody would be for it is because human species advances. You're putting yourself um, prior or behind in favor of something that is bigger and greater than yourself. Yeah. I mean... It could really actually hurt a lot of people because if you have big corporations who no longer have the need to actually pay wages because they have all these robots doing it, I mean, how, imagine how many people would be out of a job. It's not like we're going to have like extensive welfare programs to just keep these people housed if they have no money, assuming that we still have capitalism. Wait, why? Why, why would you assume okay we, we still have capitalism yeah we can still have capitalism but still have social and public like welfare and whatever right those two things yeah, can mutually yeah, coexist they, they already exist to a certain extent so if companies are now only using ai and robots i'm pretty sure the correct assumption would be unless those companies and corporations want to be taken advantage of like a fucking tyrant um or taken like out of the game considering that you're literally the only force that is capable of doing anything and considering that we are actually moving more towards like more government and state control than they would be there not i wouldn't exactly say to represent the people but they do have the power to threaten those companies and corporations and as a result yeah the correct assumption would be that yes that's exactly what's going to happen yes people are going to have to be com compensated because otherwise they're going to revolt we're already seeing this to a certain extent today let alone move into the future where now these corporations like don't even have any workers we already have problems with them nowadays where we do have some workers or a lot of workers like yeah so the correct assumption would be that this is going to lift the living standard of all human beings while the premium technologies are going to be available to the filthy rich fast and then the rich and then the medium and then the poor um it's also going to live the living standards of everybody else considering that that is the correct observation to make considering that's what we've observed to be the case in human history that when the rich get richer that increases the living standard in general around the world is it doing a good enough job obviously not but it does whether we like it or not yeah yeah i i think it would be very like actually it'd be pretty terrible just to have a competition between a government and a corporation seeing who can like the government, if it's going to provide welfare, would have to be bigger than the corporations. But if the corporations are only growing and they have to continue to fight their way, like wouldn't there eventually be a case where corporations will grow to a point of like not needing, I don't know the exact term, but not really needing governments in a way? I mean, there are examples of like countries that are basically just owned by one corporation it's not exactly like it's an impossibility that a corporation could just outgrow the government yeah, i think if you rely on it for like technology it would not be great um yeah i i totally disagree i i again will will yes while there are countries like that they're usually mismanaged entirely and they're they tend to be very poor countries where that corruption can arise to even begin with and being given the chance to great gain such a huge momentum and advantage over the rest of civilization and as a result they just are malicious actors who are given the chance to do the thing that they do and they do it in america in at least the western world we don't 
observe that to be the case. Every time corporations get bigger and bigger, so does the fucking government. And as a result, we're just going to be seeing a dance between the two, considering that's what we've observed to be the case for the last God knows how long. So yeah, that would be the correct assumption that they're just going to get taxed more and more and more. Um, and they're just going to keep uh, providing in that region considering their stability and there are other benefits that wouldn't be provided to them in anywhere else in the world. But yeah, um, I'm going to let you get the last word and then we're going to go to closing statements. So go ahead. Yeah, my, my main thing is how would, like, say this does happen, say that we're people rely strictly on welfare programs, they don't have labor or anything like that. Uh, I don't think this would be good for mental well-being. <clears throat> I think that uh, it's been shown multiple times over extensive periods of time that like having a sense of purpose somewhere and you have to continuously show up, continuously be there is good for a person's self-help, self-being, self... And just... And it's actually helped address a lot of mental illness issues schizophrenic uh anxiety people depression has all been like minimized to the best of its ability that even like psychology has not been able to match when it comes to being participating <laughs> in a job and i don't think that if you eliminate that it would be good for the people it's not like you can just replace a hobby with that because you will still have continuous burnouts you will continue and have people who were like just replace activities with surrogate activities that will never actually meet the real satisfaction people gain this is why a lot of psychiatrists now have started actually prescribing to a lot of mm -hmm. unemployed people like jobs because it is actually good for your mental well-being it's not something that you can just dismiss as if it's not going to impact how people feel living in a society where they don't have to work they don't they rely strictly off of like just welfare okay so i'm glad that Game Boy left it until the last point considering that that's usually a point that people fall or the trap that people fall into earlier on the idea or the narrative that somehow now that we are rich enough that everybody doesn't need to have a job that somehow this is going to be a, a, a negative for humanity i'm telling you what guys um that's the last thing we need to worry about and actually all the evidence suggests that prior to jobs existing we were just adventurers you see that's the beauty of being a complex being that we are capable of imagining things and like going out and seeking things that don't we haven't already found and as a result is there going to be a competition between ai well yeah only if you want to considering that the whole reason why psychiatrists and psychologists sorry no quotation mark psychiatrists and psychologists are like administering like help to fucking people who don't have jobs and like giving them jobs is because usually when you get a job you get paid and you can buy things and like you can afford uh, to take care of yourself which we know is the thing that will like increase your mental state but there's no reason to assume that because then we would essentially say like fucking pensioners or people um like who are of a sane mind which i don't think pensioners are going to entirely maybe for the first couple of years but usually they correlate with older people but let's just say young pensioners in the world that there is zero reason to assume that that is going to take away from human beings considering that we are capable of engaging in things simply for the sake of engaging with things there doesn't need to be a extra add-on motivator to it in other words we i can just sing because i like to sing if if i'm now singing because i want to create an album in order to sell the album in order to make money from the album we could even argue that that thing is hindering my progress or the 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 things that i can achieve um through my endeavors in it and as a result yes i think it's a silly thing to uh, uh, a silly thing to point to again um, as far as I'm concerned, there are plenty of mysteries and questions out there for humanity. I really do believe in the human potential to be able to achieve different types of civilizations, type one, type two civilizations, where we can travel throughout the universe. We can understand the mysteries of the universe. We can, we can discover new worlds out there. We can find new planets. As a result, increase our survivability because guess what? At some point, our fucking rock here that's hurling through space is going to reach its deadline. It's probably going to come out 
come about in hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years. But regardless, something is going to come prior to that, whether it's a fucking asteroid or it's the sun, like, giving us shit. I mean, again, small differences in the universe create big problems here on Earth. And as a result, just leaving it up to chance, considering that's what we're doing, if we're not for transhumanism, considering there is a limitation to how much our bodies can achieve. And again, even if we do do gene splicing or whatever the fucking case is, again we are going to be bound to this body. And if this body is dismantled, whether it be cut off the head or blown this to fuck up, there is no way of keeping or um, pro um, protecting our mortal bodies. And as a result, yes, humanity does have the potential to advance. Humanity out there, the, the, what we are capable of as a species is unimaginable. We are fucking unbelievable. We are base as fuck. Fuck every other goddamn species out there. We'll get rid of every single one of them. I want to live in fucking Star Trek, have my own little fucking pew pew, little fucking spaceship and shit. And the only way to achieve that is through this endeavor. And yes, we have the potential to survive throughout the universe and discover unimaginable things. And yeah, we should totally be for that progress and not try to hinder it at every single corner simply because of speculation and what ifs so yeah that's my closing statement and again thank you debater or game boy yeah go ahead man. uh i i just think that uh these are our closing that... statements though just so you know right so after this we're going to the judges go ahead yeah basically a good debate i guess uh brought up some pretty good points uh I did not bring up any of the points I wanted to, but it was all right. Uh, I, basically, that's it. I have nothing I really want to bring up. All right. Okay, well, we'll bring in the debate, uh, the judges. Here we go. Uh, Panda. Wait, you're not even muted. Wait, didn't I mute I, you guys? I, I, I muted the Vegan is already on the on the job. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> what is up with Tabo? Tabo. I thought you were going to go leave, Vegan. Decided to sacrifice my uh, sleep schedule. Okay. But, oh, oh, enough of me. Three yeah. judges. I know, I know, the three judges. I need some I, water. I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm fucking dehydrated. Give me a chance. Yeah, I'll be back in two seconds. That so while he's gone. Too long. It was it was a two hour debate. It was a two hour debate. Uh, I have unmuted the three judges. We're gonna go alphabetically. Uh, Turbo, you are self muted and deafened. Just so you know, you you're you're gonna have to. I, I don't think he hears us, but you're gonna have to. Un there, okay. Oh, so there what we're gonna know. do? Because TB's not here yet. TB's not here yet. Shut up. Once he comes back, we're gonna go uh, alphabetical order through the three judges. So it'll be non fun first, you say your thing, and then we'll do Panda, and then we'll do Turbo. Turbo, let him speak. Jesus. Turbo Turbo likes me. Turbo likes me. He's doing it for the memes. That's fine. Okay, brilliant. I love, I love Vegan. Vegan's great. Okay, yeah. so, um, one second, let me get this set up. Mm. So non fun Panda, then Turbo. The, those are the three judges. That is correct, no, Vegan. No, 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 you are correct. Okay, so here's the no. scorecard. Um, zero. Okay, so the way we're going to do it is we're going to go to my judge, or well, my judge, I mean, we're going to go to Tarbo, then we're going to go to Panda, and last of all, we're going to go to Nonfon. So go, go ahead, Tarbo, give us the score, okay? And st all, uh, guys, just the order is... Wait, can everybody hear me? The order is me first, just and then... Just give me the score, right? Yeah, yeah, just the score for both of us. Me first, and then Game Boy. Go ahead. Yeah, I got third... I got I got Boss at 30, I got... I got uh, uh, um, uh, Game, Game Boy. Boy at 28. Yo, W. Holy shit. Okay, that's really close. All right. Um, what was it? Panda. Go ahead. Turbo. Turbo. I got I got boss at uh 12. Gamer Boy at uh 16. Ooh, one one. It all comes down to this, boys and girls. Let's go. Right. Non fun. I have the boss at 26. Ooh. Gamer Boy. <laughs> At 30. Yo, oh, oh. fuck, bro. That's <laughs> bullshit. Holy shit. Okay, no, I'm joking. Good, good, good nah, debate. That was a good debate. Yeah, yeah. good debate, uh, man. I, I honestly thought I was losing that because I was, the, all the things I prepared for totally 
never came up and I kind of had to chill in the job thing like last moment even though I kind of like did most of my research on that. Yeah. I mean, like to be fair, I'm not really going to uh, like my I'm I don't know. Yeah, I'm not going to bring up your points for you. Like you're supposed to do that yourself, but I mean, obviously you didn't need to considering you won. So, congratulations, yeah. man. Uh yeah, good job. Won. Good debate. Boss sucks. I suck. Transhumanism sucks. Transhumanism sucks. And I should probably no. change my opinions. Probably. There we go. E easy L. You Fast lost. L. I you... did lose. Yes. Rub it in. Yeah, I'm going gonna, gonna to be listening about this Gamer for the Boy, next week. Gamer Boy 1? Gamer yeah. Boy 1, yes. Yeah. I'm just as surprised as you. You destroyed That's him. Not also, Panda, correct. you haven't replied to my thing. Oh, okay? yeah. Bidenomics debate. Well, you I saw you making fun of Biden about it. Okay. I don't know anyone, but uh, you were make, you're the one making fun of Biden in the game chat. Game. I saw you. Game Boy, anyone? Wait, what? Lost? The yes, boss lost. lost. Yes, the, the boss. boss lost. Oh, yes. The boss lost. My ears. Turbo screen. Oh, Are you done? Okay, I'll <laughs> unmute everybody. Wait, who's who's okay? Who's the guy in the spaceship in the corner? That, uh, that would be Crimson. Okay, okay, okay. No, right. no, 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 not Ducky. I don't know who Ducky is. Who the fuck's Ducky? No, 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 no. Ducky, Ducky's. I talked uh, while the debate was going on. Ducky joined non fun server, asked okay, okay, what was okay, going okay, on, okay, and okay. then I talked to him, and he seems sane and rational, and he interacted. All with right, the chat. okay, awesome. Let's fucking oh, go. We have pretty low standards for sane and rational. Yeah, I've got my, oh. I've got my fucking heat seeker drone missile right on. Exactly, the my mods are here. Man, the band, Okay, the band all right. Band. Just, to, just to prove to Panda, Ducky, you can yeah. unmute yourself and you say your opinion on it. And if it is unhinged, yeah, let's go around the table. I'm curious. I'm curious. Like I'm curious. Named Game yeah. Boy being against tech is very. So Ducky, you say your opinion. Yeah. That very what that is your opinion of the debate there, Ducky? Yeah. Ducky doesn't even talk. It's an animal. Testing. Testing. We can I hear, you. hear you. Yeah, I gotta get on my phone to do this. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of stuff about AI and stuff. I don't no, know. I'm here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See you, dude. Where was I? About AI. I don't we know. Talked about AI for two hours. Yep, we did. He's he's literally talking about his response to the debate. Yes, Panda. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. The point. let's let's give That's him a chance to respond. Yeah, go ahead, man. Did I suck? Did Game Boy did better? Did is the scoring based or should I should I do a Trump? Yes, I was. Wait, oh, was he? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Ducky was. I was looking at his comments to see what I should change yeah. the entire way through. Are you looking yeah, at a lot up? of the arguments felt a little. What do you call it? Hyperbolic, like exaggerations of truth. But there was a kernel of truth there that is actually a whole field of study and research. It's like AI safety, AI like alignment is its own field of study that could have been elaborated upon. And so I just Whoa. went off and chat a little and nerded out and just. Did that, yeah. yeah. Who won? Who won, Ducky? Who won? We're curious. Go ahead. I'm inclined to agree with. I, I don't know how things work around here, so I'm just giving my own subjective thing. Yeah. I'm inclined to agree with Game Boy, Got but it's honestly wrong. It felt like oh, he banned. was banned. slightly better on the presentation. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I freaking agree with the boss. Let's, Let's go, go Nader. Let's okay, go. Nader, Nader, Nader is uh, the only opinion that matters. Let's go. Uh, the I, I should have addressed how he can like give me some goddamn like, AI stuff. kitties. Yeah. Everywhere, wow. Okay? I missed that. Holy shit! I didn't even bring up the AI cat girls. What an idiot! <laughs> oh damn! Holy okay, shit! Okay, you you want to know why you lost, boss? Yeah, go ahead. I got you guys. All right. Okay, you lost because, I mean, not even totally on ideas, but just bad faith. Uh, <laughs> one was you were talking shit about Trump and his family being uh, not good enough for Bisky or something. That's kind of Min fucked up. Minus 50 billion well, I mean, for that. he's right. Yeah. Oh, and then the other bad so... faith, the other bad faith was talking shit about uh, skeptics or vaccine uh, skeptic people. You're just like, oh, I lose because of the of things that have nothing to do with the debate. Fuck this, bro. Holy shit. You shouldn't shit. have said it, then. You shouldn't have said it, Fucking then. panda. Yep. I mean, it's fair game. That's, that's fine. Panda, panda, dude. Uh, set my challenge or not, panda. 
Panda, the accepted. Yeah, do you accept this challenge? Actually, oh, I said Biden. Yeah. What? 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 You've got. You're being challenged by non-fun. He's I, challenging dude, you on I, Bidenomics. I, I, I tell I, I did it. I added you like two again. times, dude. You're not talking to him. Chat and I did it in. No, I never um, talked to him. Wait, that's beef. What? What the fuck? That's not beef. Wait, you guys have got. Okay. Oh shit. Okay. Oh, we still have to have Does our Zionism. Uh, Will? Debate. Okay. So Nonfon is asking Panda. Panda. I'll talk to you in my yeah. server after. Non right. Nonfon is asking Panda for a debate. Will Panda accept? No. No. There no. you go. Okay. Easy. Okay. No, Easy. Okay. because okay. I was okay. supposed okay. to uh, debate Joe Biden and then they replaced her, him with Kamala and I don't want to debate Kamala. Yeah, you gotta run in high okay, school. Well, I'm just, I, I, I want yeah, to debate on Bidenomics. You were making fun of Biden. You said Bidenomics had the pro. So I, I want to debate. Is I, no, I, I just blocked the dude. I don't, I don't have his video up. I don't have his chat up. I, whoa, I don't whoa, here. that you're, is beef. You're muted. Why You've muted got muted beef with. No, wait, why are you muting people? Who told you you can mute well, people? Just, he can mute. He can. He can mute who he wants. No, he can't. Well, no, no. Yes, I can't even I can't, no, even, I can't no, even mute no, I can't even mute I can't even mute people for no reason. No. We have people that are stupid. Thank you, Nader. Yeah, exactly. Agreed. Base. Right, I'm going yeah, for a right. cigarette. If anyone else wants to debate Bidenomics, I'm up to do it. Well, okay, hey, judges. Anybody can mute me. I don't care. Yeah, no, stop He's muting gonna... people. This is the unspoken rule. Be... We've already said this multiple times. We Jesus. don't just mute people. Yeah. <laughs>